Oh, the picture that Callie colored this morning? Yeah. Oh, much better. That's really good, Mama. For you, for Mommy and you. Is that me? Yeah, this is you, this is Mama. Nice. I love it, man. Look at me, I'm looking smooth. We're gonna find out what Booby wants to be for Halloween. Are you, are you a policeman, or are you a doctor, or are you uh, Princess Elena? Or Princess Tiana? Because mommy can do your hair like Princess Tiana if you want. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, Because we can order the, the thing online for Princess Tiana. This way we can get everything exactly like our outfit. But we need to do it today so we're not rushing. All right, what about Booby? What is Booby going to be? I was thinking you could be Moana and Booby can be a little baby Maui. Okay. <laughs> that would be super funny, right? Yeah. All right, let's try. Let's see if we can get that a baby Maui uniform for Booby. We'll ask him when we get home. It's Santa. Saturday. But that's okay. I'll have to get control of this situation uh, right now. Get some coffee, get some caffeine, feed these guys, and clean up. This is what happened when I used to work on Sundays. I used to come in, come from Sunday working all day, then go grocery shopping, then come home, and the house was like what you see now. So it was like super anxious working on Sunday knowing that I would have to come home and the house would be a wreck. So at least I'm here in real time. My wife's at yoga, but she was here while we were at gymnastics. So like basically, Booby tore up the house. Then we come home, she leaves. Uh, but I guarantee when she comes home, everything will be straight. Because that's what I do. And these little puppies, along with this will allow me to get some work while they take a nap. So as soon as they go down, I can squeeze in two hours of work. It all matters. All right, you're doing good, buddy. Keep, keep cleaning. Madison's doing great. All right, and then we're gonna have snacks and we're gonna play Wake Up Daddy. Okay, good job. All right, Booby, you're doing good, buddy. You don't have to cry. You can just clean, cause those are fake tears anyway. Booby, look at my face. Do I look like I care? Do I look like I care? So, so, so stop crying. Go ahead. You're doing good. All right, man. Minus is parking the tricycle. All right, we're doing good, guys. Come on. One spin. All right. That's it. That's it. Oh, no. Purple star. He spins again. Booby, you get one spin. All right. That's it. Red. Oh, you are red. You did it bad. All right. I'm going to have. I'm gonna let him move so he learns how to count and move, okay? Yeah, Here, buddy. You move your own piece, okay? Uh oh 
Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yo, whoo wee. So everybody's asleep, but it's like 11.30. Um, so I'm at a crossroads. I mean, I can chill out, watch TV, eat some ice cream, go to bed, sleep late, or take my ass downstairs to the gym, get a workout, watch the same show while I'm working out, take a shower, and then hop on the computer and get some work done. Decisions, decisions. At the end of the day, you gotta live with yourself. So, it really isn't a decision to make. Let's get it. Here we go, baby. Got that six. Woo, baby. All right. At least that's over with. So now, I don't got to worry about making any excuses. I can save the excuses for something else. All right. Shower and uh, try to get some work done. Or not. It's so hard to tell. Being a YouTuber is not easy. Um, so I've just been editing and, and putting up video because I need to try to catch up. I'm like a week behind from what you see on Instagram to what you see on YouTube. Granted, on YouTube, I'm not getting any views, um, but I'm not expecting to get any views yet. Um, this, all the, po all the stuff that I'm posting on YouTube is gonna matter when I'm successful. Right now, it's not gonna matter. So there's no need for you to, for me to um, publish my YouTube channel or anything like that. Um, when I start making some significant money, then I can refer to my YouTube channel, right? So um, that's a long play. But man, just trying to get, get caught up. Um, because when I'm in real time here and in real time in YouTube, I think that's where... Um, a lot of the magic is going to happen. So maybe today I can try to close a gap. I'm about nine days. It says nine days apart. So I'd love to be like a day apart, a day apart. But we'll see. All right. That's your update. So I realized <clears throat> that I need to start teaching my kids more at home. Like reading, writing, math. Because... Um, yeah, this is this is gonna sound foul because basically, you know, all the white people that I know or that I associate with are good white people, right? Because I tend to associate with good people. But but there are not so good black people and white people, right? And if you read Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, um, she talks about teaching a classroom full of students, right? And in one scenario, they gave the teacher a list of names and they said, hey, these five, I don't know if it was five, but these five kids are the brightest students um, in, in this class that you're going to be receiving. And at the end of the So anyway, these, um, the kids that they told the teachers in the beginning of the year that would do better, they were random kids. But they said, these are the top kids in this class. At the end of that year, those kids actually did better. So that means that if the teacher basically feels that the kid is smart, that kid or those kids will get more of the right um, attention from the teacher, right? So conversely, if the teacher feels like the kid 
Oh. Yeah, so conversely, if the teacher feels that your child um, isn't as capable, they will get that type of attention, and that will also become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you have a teacher that might be racist but not realize it, right? Because this lady, if I met her at a parent-teacher's conference, and if you hung out with her and if you talked to her, I don't think you can detect any... I don't think she would consider herself racist, but subliminally, she is probably teaching black kids different than she's teaching white kids. And um, I don't know if that's racist or whatever. I I don't care what it is, but the possibility that that can exist um, as a parent, you need to sort of mitigate that possibility. And that comes with um, doing these lessons and, and reading and writing with your kids at home. I think when the kids get a certain age and, and a thirst for knowledge and they can teach and learn for themselves, they're in the clear. But in the first, second, third grade of, of fundamental learning, you got to make sure that you take some responsibility. Tonight, a Pennsylvania middle school teacher has been suspended after her racist rant aimed at an African-American parent dropping off his child in the school's parking lot. Probably on welfare, too. Not even a little bit. Six figures a year, man. It's because I'm young and I'm black and the reason why you would say that. That's right, because you're black. The parent, who does not want to be identified, says it all stemmed from a minor fender bender in the parking lot of Drexel Hill Middle School. In the video, you see the teacher come out from around the truck and yell derogatory statements and a racial slur toward the parent. Tonight, the school district's superintendent speaking out. This is not the appropriate way to interact or to communicate with with anybody in the public. So as you see from that clip, it's hard to imagine that that a black or Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, student is going to get the same level of attention and care from that particular teacher um, as their white counterparts, right? And again, I'm not in no way, shape, or form painting a broad stroke um, on white America. Um, (laughs) But you don't know what you don't know. And so you need to assume that, that this exists. And again, I think if you met this woman... I mean, she called him a fu- an F in N word. Like, if you met her, if she's watching that, she probably won't even realize that came out of her. But it did, and it can. And so, again, if it's up to you as a parent to inject yourself in the child's development process to make sure that they're not getting slighted. So, anyway, that's it. Okay, actually, that's not it. So, money, there's there's very little things that you can do um, for your child that's going to really make a difference, right? Um, And money, size of house, type of car you drive makes no different. Amount of toys makes no different to a child, right? A, A poor kid and a rich kid their happiness does not depend on toys or material things at all, period. I mean, I was just as happy as my kids were growing up, and I had far less. What does matter is their level of education, so what school they're going to and the attention they get from their teachers, and their parents' involvement. So being involved with your kids, taking them on new experiences, Watching them watch you take responsibility um, for your life and for your happiness. Um, These are all the things, you know, taking your kids to places and putting them in situations that um, they normally wouldn't be in and having fun in those situations and and helping them learn and, and have a curiosity for learning. These are the best things that you can do for the development of your kids. So buying toys or having a big car None of that means, I'm I'm telling you, none of that means anything. Having grown up with like next to nothing, I was a happy kid 
and my kids, I would almost say, are less happy, right? It's weird. So none of that matters. What matters is your involvement with the kid, their education, and the experiences that they have growing up that are going to formulate them as young adults. And also what you do every day, how you treat your spouse, how you talk to your spouse, what you expect of your spouse to you, that that all matters way more than buying them anything. All right, both my kids are up now, so I gotta end this. Plus, I think I've said more than enough. Hope you're still watching. Hope I didn't offend anybody.